the spirit of reconciliation, we are theatre and Theatrical Aloud acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples today. One and all, we are here for a chat. It is going to be odd and exciting because we got podcasters galore here on the podcast this week. Hello, Victoria, Eliza, what's going on? Hello. Hi. <laughs> this we is are... so, this is really weird. I didn't expect to need to like introduce myself just then. I was like, oh no, this is, <laughs> this is not my show. <laughs> this is not my show. All right. I know. <laughs> so for all of my listeners, if you guys don't know who these girls are, they run the Stage Door podcast. They're pretty much um, the other Australian theatre podcast right now that is running amok around the world while we are bringing theatre back to it. Um, where did you guys, how did you guys start your show? Where did you guys oh, wow. yeah, cool, um, do this? <laughs> well, uh, I guess for, for me, it's... Uh, I think what I always say, I have, I had the idea of this podcast for, for many, many, many years. Um, I've always been a theatre lover um, and I, I've always been a performer. So I was kind of like, I would love to do, you know, a podcast and podcasts are like my go-to for like if I'm working out or I'm driving. So I was like, you know what? There's not enough theatre podcasts. I want to start one, but I never wanted to do it by myself because, um, yeah. Well, I did, honestly, when we started this idea, we didn't know what it was going to be. Was it just going to be no. talking about theatre? Was it going to be interviewing? And then Eliza and I went to uni together. We were about a year apart at uni and we became good friends then. And we started working together at a theatre. And I literally just one day was like, hey, I've had this idea for ages of doing a podcast about theatre we really click and you have really good energy because I think that's so important in a podcast yeah. is like a person's energy mm. and I was like would you want to do a podcast with me and she said yes evidently here I am <laughs> was, I definitely yeah. said yes and I mean also the the podcast kind of came out of also a time like with COVID we mm. didn't start the podcast when COVID started, we started talking about it pre-COVID. Yeah. But then, of yeah. course, when COVID hit, like Tori said, we didn't have an exact idea about what we wanted to do. We didn't know if it was basically going to be us at the time. We were like, oh, no one's going to want to talk to us. Oh, even getting like a teacher from where we used to perform, that would be difficult. And, um, and then obviously COVID hit. And then Tori and I just went, Why not? let's do it why not and we we took that leap of faith and emailed a bunch of amazing performers and we have learned through doing this podcast just how putting yourself out there can get you further than than what you can expect it's, it's crazy like the responses that we have had because I think we started off yeah with really with the idea of we're just going to be chatting about theater and I think our first couple of episodes was that you know our first and just like we talked about why we love theater we did an episode about um uh like stage door etiquette and stuff like that and then we just kind of went okay so we'll get a friend on the podcast test having a guest see what that's like maybe that's something we can do occasionally have a guest and then we went, okay, we did a show together with um, the beautiful Liz Evans, who does cabaret. Like, okay, we'll ask her. And then we just kind of went one day, we both studied with Monique Saleh. And we just kind of went one day, you know what? We'll do it. We'll ask, you know, if she rejects us, it will suck, but it's okay. You know, you keep moving. And she said, yes. And then we kind of just, yeah, like, like Eliza said, just had this like, oh, wait we're allowed to we're allowed to reach out to people like people are, are allowed to say no yeah but like we're allowed to like message these people and then you know we messaged mon and we messaged gareth isaac and we mes messaged uh, georgina hobson and video mccann and all kinds of people and we were just like oh people like doing this yeah exactly like and i i started my first show with six like in the start of 2020 so like before everything was kind of bubbling like I was in New mm. York and got the all clear to do it and then got home COVID hit and all of a sudden everyone was like cool we want to talk can you like like 
they had time and I was like, yeah, cool. All right, we can do this. Let's sit down and have a chat. So, um, yeah, I really like that. Like just reaching out to people, huge yeah. thing. Like, and it's like getting that over that hump where it's like, yeah, cool. I know what I'm doing, I, I think. Yeah. If I'm not, <laughs> and I, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And it, as performers, because both Tori and I obviously started as performers ourselves and we still are performers, but uh, as performers, we don't ask the thing we are scared when when we're at a director's table or we're doing an audition we'll be too scared to ask the questions mm -hmm. we're too scared to go hey I really would love some help could you come and teach me something where we're nervous about doing those things because oh we can't overstep our boundary oh we can't do this we can't do that but I definitely think we both have learned to just go for what we want yeah. And to stop worrying about the what ifs or the, oh, could this be a bad move? Just jump in head first and just go for it. Now, for those of you listening at home, pretty much if you look at the last like four or five episodes of our podcast side by side, we've pretty much covered the same stuff. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, but we're in completely different world. So when you guys um, figured out what you guys were doing, started your guess, um, what did you guys look for? Um, how did you like structure your episodes and think about, cool, this is what we're going to talk about in this episode with this person? I think we kind of collectively, um, we look, we like to look at a person's resume. I think at first we were kind of just like, ah, oh, like just ask them anything about their career. But then as we kind of got the hang of it and we're doing it more often, we together kind of would curate a list of, uh, broader and more specific questions that we think um, our listeners would be interested in as well as ourselves because this is also a learning process for us we're getting to hear from industry professionals about their experience and their do's and don'ts and their yeah their experience in theater so we kind of just curated questions that you know sometimes asked the hard questions but also we still want to keep it light and fun to listen to um so I think yeah we kind of just curated based on like their resume what they're currently doing if they weren't doing anything yeah. um their hopes for the future any advice as well because so often exactly like Eliza said you're scared to ask people these things sometimes so it's good I think to have that connection through us of going so this is what you guys wish you could ask yeah. so we're going to find out the answers for you yeah, I've, I've found that a lot. Like even directors, producers and all that type of thing. I've had casting agents on a c couple of my shows and, and like they're just willing to give you information if you ask the right question. I'm like, cool, I'm not in that world, but someone listening might want this information here. I'll ask this question. <laughs> oh, yeah. definitely. I think one of my favourite episodes we did was with a casting director. Um, Daisy Hicks. Cast, Daisy Hicks who casts shows. Because I was sitting there going, oh, my God, so many of our listeners are going to be so excited to hear this information. Like, this is what you what you dream to hear. And so it's really exciting for us when we find out information that not only did we not know, but that our listeners will really take value from. Yeah. So starting a podcast during COVID, uh, <laughs> what was the hardest thing for you guys getting things up and running? Oh, technology, technology. Oh, yes. That was even, I think the first couple of episodes, I think we filmed, recorded, sorry, together um, at Eliza's house and um, also discovering that echo is a thing. And like, obviously, like, you know, these things, but when you discover them and it's your own work and you're like, oh, okay, yeah. that's, that's great. Um, I think technology was a hard thing like we very quickly went from recording in person to only being able to record online and figuring out you know very soon after COVID really hit Australia that's when we started to have guests and then going oh god like how do we if we were to do this in person it would probably be heaps easier which we did discover it's actually not a lot easier um but <laughs> going okay like do we use zoom do we use like do we use google meets like how do we get their recording because obviously like you can record via zoom but sometimes that it, sometimes it works really well sometimes it doesn't like i think technology was a big yeah was a big 
thing for us, I would say, right? Right? Yeah, we had one episode actually, and oh. it was quite early on. And so we with had the amazing the incredible Chris yeah, Fung. We had, we had the incredible Chris Fung on, and he's on West End now. He's in Frozen right now, playing the king in Frozen. He is just doing amazing stuff. And he came on very generously, um, came on to our podcast, and we did our first episode. And in our emails, we always say, you know, wear headphones and stuff. But because we were such newbies, we didn't check, double check. We were just excited about doing the episode. So anyway, we go and we do the episode. And unfortunately, there were no headphones on his end the whole time, which actually for viewers at home means that your audio bleeds through and you can hear it in their audio. So you cannot use the episode at all. So that was like we tried. I think I think I spent a few hours trying to work on that episode, trying to be like, no, no, it's fine. I don't want to I don't want to have to go back and ask him again to come back on, because how awful would that be? And I tried so hard because I think we got to the end of the episode and it was like, it was on us because we kind of, I went at the end, I went, mm. oh God, I it didn't totally check that us. he was wearing headphones. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't even think to ask. And what a generous but, guy though. He came uh, back on. He was We recorded twice trooper. more. He, he yep. Chris was our, our little test subject with all of our technical difficulties because we ended up having to record three times um <laughs> but you know what but can you awesome. what can you do no he was amazing uh, i totally understand that like i was i can't even remember how many episodes i was in i got courtney monsma from six on or who is now frozen but um and for whatever reason my recordings with her malfunctioned and <gasps> corrupted the files so we had like an hour long oh. episode that i just couldn't use any of and i was like Hey, Court. <laughs> um, hey. <laughs> Luckily, you know, that's the word. Like, technology and podcasting guys, um, they should mm-hmm. mix, but they definitely do not. Um, as much as you exactly. want it to work, um, nine times out of ten, it will not. Um, <laughs> no. We've had, we, even, we even found like our solution to this when recording remotely, which is pretty much all we do now since Eliza has moved into state, we discovered the amazing uh, website called Squadcast, which is like Zoom, but specifically for podcast recording. Yes. But of course it does cost to use. And it just sometimes it still just does not work. We've had like guests drop out of the call three or four times and we're just like, we're so sorry. There, there, is, there is just nothing that we can do. There, literally nothing. Yeah. Thank you for your time. We appreciate you. Please don't hate us. Yeah. But sometimes it's not even like technology. Like I've recorded guests in the UK and power has gone out in their house. And like I've had. Whoa. Yeah, like it's been <laughs> insane. COVID really just had fun with recording episodes. So yeah. I've got like oh, a lot of editing where it's like dead air because people like just weren't there for 20 minutes while all their power yeah. came back on. Just hilarious. <laughs> Love it. Fun. Love it. Um, so. Going into the end of 2020, we got shows back here. So what was that like for you guys, not only as podcasters, but theatre fans to see the industry kind of wake back up here? It was emotional. Yeah, yeah. definitely. It was like, I think we spoke about it many times on the podcast, like going back to see live theatre again was like, one of those things and it's so awful because obviously we're very lucky here that we do get to have theater back at the moment and we are back at the 100% capacity um but like seeing shows uh, like was a very emotional experience because you're like we I there was a point in our lives where we just went we, theater might just not exist anymore yeah. we just might not we might not get to see it we might not get to do it anymore so I think it was really emotional I think the first like big show that I saw again was frozen and I bawled my eyes out because I was like I just never thought that this was going to happen again yeah I went to the first show of frozen like when it came back and uh, I was just sitting there and just hearing na na and I was just like oh, yeah. <laughs> it was just like chilling your eyes out. and I was like nope this is it I'm going home <laughs> yep. oh yeah 
I so think good. as well, um, having shows back has actually given us a lot of opportunities as well. And that has been something that's been really lovely because we did create this during COVID. And so we've just been talking to people who were doing amazing things before COVID or have had really awesome COVID initiatives. Like a lot of the online shows that had been on, we'd been interviewing some people from those. So it was really exciting and it has been very exciting to finally get to talk to people who are in shows yeah. and hear a little bit about what, what has changed, what, what is new, um, their own excitement, because hearing their excitement about coming back from COVID is probably the best thing. <laughs> yeah, right. It's, it's like it's such a weird thing. And for those of you listening abroad, um, Right now, at point of recording, we know the West End's months away from reopening and Broadway's just oh, released yeah. ticket sales for its start. So things are waking back up worldwide. It's so good. And, like, just to be able to reach out and connect with people and then discuss what they went through, like, not only as a performer but personally through those 12 months and the things that they had to mm. do. Just a lot of really eye-opening stories I think and seeing how other people handled it because like my COVID was great because I had the Queen of Podcast and I was recording every week and I was <laughs> not even I was living in my own little bubble where outside it didn't really affect me and then I started yeah. talking to people and I'm like okay like now I understand other perspectives it was just really interesting from my point um let's have a chat about podcasting setting things up and getting connected with people. Uh, for those people mm. at home that have ever thought about starting a podcast, this is going to be your go-to guide of <laughs> getting things up and ready. <laughs> people who really don't know what they're doing, but we're going to tell you anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> that's the thing. If you don't know what you're doing, start a podcast because we don't either. Let's be real. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, no, you're, you're 100% correct. Literally. I think we started this and I was like, so I think Eliza said to me, like, what do we like need to do? And I was like, record. Yeah. And edit. How and we, and we upload it we somewhere. <laughs> and then we <laughs> hope for the best and hope that people like it, uh, are listening to it and that it does not sound like shit. Yeah, exactly. hundred <laughs> percent. That was it. And like, I recorded my first episode of Queen of Podcast in my hotel room in New York on my phone. Like, if you go back, the audio quality is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> but I launched that thing. Um, so let's strip it back because you guys have just done a rebranding mm. for season two. So let's mm. have a look at it from our knowledge of what we know now, not what we didn't know. We did um, know. Branding your show, figuring out name, theme, how you're going to present yourself on social media. How did you guys come up with your kind of – um vibe on socials i think this is a very oh sorry no no go for it i think that this is a very important question because for tori and i we did change the name of the show Ooh, so was... that was quite so we did we have in our new we... rebrand just slightly changed it it's still ps meet me at stage door but now it's stage door podcast because when we were talking to people, they were like, oh, um, Stage Door Podcast, right? So they would abbreviate it themselves. And so when yeah. we came into 2021, we really wanted to rebrand to that shortened name. But we still kept in our like in our intro and our song title because we love our little jingle and it's almost like an addition to the name. It's now yeah. more the jingle rather than the actual name. But Tori actually does most of our social media. So Tori take it away <laughs> <laughs> I think I think yeah I think we learned quite quickly like with like the name I think we loved it and we still love it and it is it's more like our our slogan now um I think we kind of were super excited with the name and I think quite quickly into season one we kind of went oh it's maybe a little bit long for a name um and like exactly like Eliza said like we were talking to people and I would talk to people at, at like workshops and things like that and they'd be like I would say PS meet me at stage door and they're like oh yeah that stage door podcast and I'm like mm, okay so the name doesn't quite stick in anybody's head so when it came to 2021 we went okay we wanted to sit down with our designer we reworked our logo a little bit just to make it 
match our new aesthetic a bit more because we started off with these really always really bright colored posts but it all just started to feel a little incohesive like a little so fade kind of yeah it, it didn't look very you know I'm very much someone that's about as a social media manager very much making it aesthetic and a continuous aesthetic yeah. so we sat down both together and with um our designer who designed our logo which is the brilliant Kate Gunther uh Catherine Gunther I guess um and kind of had that conversation about the color scheme and just updating our logo to make it a bit fresher and, and also look a little bit more like us because you know I think maybe it was like a month into the first season that Kate actually said to us can I rework the logo a little yeah. bit and we <laughs> and I was kind of like oh it's a little bit late now to change it so we did decide then okay season two we're gonna create a color scheme for our social media something that we the color scheme that we kind of relate to and that we were kind of always using as an underlying thing which was those like pink and mauve colors and because when we started the first season we didn't really know what we wanted to do we didn't really yeah. know who we were <laughs> what kind of podcast we were we didn't go into it going we're gonna be an interview based podcast we just went into it going theater yay yeah. um <laughs> So we took that on board and I pretty much went through and created templates for all of the different posts that we do. Sometimes we still need to create a new and different ones for, you know, we, we recently interviewed suddenly um, and I need to create some other templates to be able to workshop their art a little bit more. And so it wasn't too much about our art for them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think with the social media, we just created more of a schedule, more of, you know, what we wanted to be putting out there. And it's all honestly it's always trial and error like sometimes even when we came back for we had, I had tried I was really determined in season one to do this thing called stage door Sundays where people would send photos of them at I stage door that. and I was like which, scrolling through your feed and I'm like that lasted like a month month and a half yeah it <laughs> look it I it, it was okay for most of season one but I did get to the point where um this is me giving See my secrets away I was reaching out to people asking for photos because also what didn't occur to me was that people aren't seeing shows Not stage so right. people yeah. aren't people aren't going to stage door so I was like scrolling through Instagram with like hashtag stage door and like trying to find photos and like reaching out to people and it got to the point where I went you know what it's just not really working and that's okay um I think it's also being okay with like that sometimes stuff just doesn't work and that's fine um you know we were paying like monthly for this website to use where we could annotate our sneak peeks and then I went you know I could do this myself and it would be a lot easier and a lot cheaper yeah um I think it's yeah just I think my main thing with social media and social media ma management because I do it for a couple of different people is just learning from everything and it's, if something doesn't work that's okay it can be disappointing yeah. but that's okay like I learned that creating our website that was a time I need to find your website hold up let me go to your link tree um but yeah <laughs> it's actually very pretty I'm very impressed with our website Tori is a bit of a master with the website it's probably my greatest the greatest thing on stage door podcast is our beautiful website but you know it's a website people don't usually go to websites they go to Instagram they say yeah, people, so people don't really <laughs> use websites as much anymore uh like people but still it's important do to have it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It, it is important to have because we have started to put reviews up there. And so um, that is also another aspect um, to think about when you are doing a podcast is to have a website that when you're trying to market yourself to people or, you know, approaching networks or approaching uh, guests, you can actually send them your link to your website and it makes you look very, like more professional. Yeah. So that's definitely something I would um, suggest to anyone yeah. who is looking to do podcasting. Before we get to reaching out, let's talk about, mm. oh my God, what was the next thing I was going to talk about? There was another good topic in there. And this is the thing, guys, what you're hearing right now, sometimes you get good thoughts and then you forget them on air. And oh, it's, it's just really- The amount of like, time. Yeah. The amount That's of time why? that has happened where I've literally gone completely brain, like I blank, blank. And I'm sitting there and I'm looking at an amazing guest who has invested in my question and I- and I can't remember what I was about to say. <laughs> um, so we get our social media set, get your name set. 
um, figure out what you're going to look like. Um, yeah. Obviously, sitting down and planning content, sometimes you just got to work through it. Like, honestly, even with my first show, it was just pulling stuff out of thin air for six weeks before I landed a guest. And then I was like, cool, now I know what I'm doing. Sweet. Um, so I'm not going to touch too much on that because, like, that's a personal. It's, road. it's yeah, it's, it's exactly. It's a thing, like, you got to work through it. Like, we did not start out. We, we started out kind of just going, I guess we'll talk about this this week. Yeah. And we'll see what happens. And like, it's just, it seriously is such a learning process. And it's also something that I'm trying to, like, I do have a couple of other things, like podcast things in the works and trying to explain to people as someone that's now done a podcast, we can plan as much as we like. It, Probably it, not going to work that way. That's what I'm like. I've got like seven things that have been said yes to that just aren't going anywhere and i'm like yeah let's go so you can't yeah. rely on other people to get your stuff sorted um no. let's talk about hosting what do you guys use to upload your podcast to what website do you use we that's use uh currently buzzsprout buzzsprout oh my god that's where i started too buzzsprout is legitimately one of my favorite. which which is a good question. Where do you currently? Oh, because you're with Broadway Podcasting yeah, no, Network. I'm hosted by the network. So, um, for any, yeah, for those of you who don't know, you guys will hear ads throughout the episode. That's because I'm signed with BPN. So they now host my podcast for me. But prior to that, I was with Buzzsprout. So, Buzzsprout essentially is where you upload your show to get it uploaded onto Apple and Spotify and that type of thing. How much research did you do? Or did you just call it Buzzsprout? Yeah, that works. <laughs> It, I think we kind of, Eliza and I sat together, uh, we had like a, our first like meeting um, and we kind of sat and we like looked at Buzzsprout, I think to us, and correct me if I'm wrong, Eliza, it seemed like the simplest way to start out. We've definitely looked at other yeah. options since because we have had some like little hiccups along the way, which has have been a mix of user error and like um just like technical you know technology it, it's Issue. a ever it's a it's a growing thing that's constantly changing but i think we did some research online i think eliza actually did quite a chunk of that research um I while i was doing us, a lot of the branding stuff yeah yeah and i think that for us when looking at which which network to go with there were quite a few networks that had and i it was so long ago so i'm trying to remember now but it was they would take you would get money from them but it was just it just seemed a little sketchy yeah. on on my end and I was like this is a little too good to be true it's about ads they would put ads out and you would get a small commission of that but it would be so minute that it doesn't actually give you any mm. money at all so we we were like I think Buzzsprout was just the most straightforward it was yeah. the most well-rounded and especially because you have to get, oh, I forgot what it's called now. Wow, it's been so long. It's been like the a year RS, and a half. RSS feed. RSS? Yeah. yeah, so you have to get an RSS feed and Buzzsprout think, was probably the easiest to just yeah. get everything going and yeah. happen straight away. And that was why we went with that network. Well, not, and not, I think, not network. Yeah. With that, with that, with that uh, broadcasting network, yeah, because like when we were looking at it as well, Buzzsprout's website was super straightforward. Like it just said, like Click. it's going to give you this. Yeah, exactly. It's going to give you this. You're going to be able to do this, this, and this. Go have fun. Whereas some other websites we looked at, we were trying to find out: can we get an RSS feed? Do we need to pay more for that? Because obviously, you have to pay for a um, broadcaster unless you're with a, a network. I don't quite know how that works, but you need to pay for it in some way shape or form it's not and buzzsprout is very manageable like obviously we make a little bit from our podcast but not a whole bunch we this is like a passion project for us if you're so, podcasting for money you're in the wrong industry straight oh yeah <laughs> yeah get out <laughs> no that's not why that's not why we're here okay. um but I think, yeah, Buzzsprout was like just super clean, straightforward to the point. Also, when we've had to contact them, they've been relatively good about getting back to us yeah. quickly. I think when we uploaded our first episode, it was actually kind of by accident because we assumed that when we uploaded and like put it live to like, uh, what is it? iTunes and like Spotify that it would take some time, uh, like, you know, a week or two or something. And that's what it said. And then all of a sudden we were like, oh. Oh, the first we episode We have a is live. podcast episode. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
That's the perfect segue. So get that first episode recorded, upload it into your thing. Most of the websites that you use, guys, are pretty click friendly. Um, you have to get your RSS feed, submit your podcast to all like Spotify, mm-hmm. everything like that, and then they list it on um, to their servers, essentially. Um, get that first podcast live. Um, and I went blank again. Um, <laughs> we do this. Wow. Um, Welcome to our world. It's <laughs> so bad. I don't even feel bad because I know what you guys know what I'm going through. So I'm like, oh, 100%. Yeah. Um, it's so chill. <laughs> It's just there's always so much happening in your brain when you when you're podcasting because someone will say something and you're like oh I want to like I'll make sure I touch on yeah. that later and then you're like oh I've got no idea um, but you get that first episode live um, what was that kind of uh, and then the issue is getting the episode out how much hmm. you guys worried about listeners in the first couple of months before you were like cool this isn't something we're gonna focus on anymore. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, well, exactly, exactly. Well, we, our first episode, obviously, well, now it's, it's okay because it's had time to sit and people go through your podcast and they listen yeah. to your first episode. Your first episode has got the most views. It's, it's honestly think, the best one. I think um, we were just excited <laughs> to have anyone listen at first because we were oh, like, yeah. I think I saw like within like the first couple of days, it was like 15 listeners and I was like, 15 people have downloaded our podcast. They're like, listening. Stop it. We like, were like oh, so God, excited. Cool. My voice. What the hell? That's yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> they care about what we have to say about theater. Much. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it has it has over time evolved. Obviously. Um. But more, as you would know, some episodes are more successful than others. But you don't do the episodes for how successful they are because they can be really, really helpful to someone. And it doesn't matter if there's only you know, 50 people that listen to that episode, but they really get something out of it. So worth it compared to like getting more than that. And, you know, it's better, you know, I'm sure that they would get more out of it. They would get more out of it. But um, yeah, it, it definitely is not a focus for us anymore. No. It's definitely more about content, about our own passions yeah. and doing what we love really. Yeah, it, de- it definitely took a little while to get past that, especially when like, you know, I think, you know, we would have like one episode and we'd be like 50 people listened. And then the next episode, it would be, you know, by the time the next episode came out, there was heaps more listeners on that one. And then, but also keeping in mind that exactly like it's about what you're talking about. And also we also learned about true listenership. Yes. You know, um, how many people at first were listening because they're friends, they're family members, so on and so forth versus you know as you continue on you grow your true listenership like the people that are actually like Listen. our listeners they're they're listening every fortnight to your episode versus the family and friends that kind of just were listening to support you and now they're kind of like i'm not actually that interested in what you're talking about but keep doing good um <laughs> which is an important thing to keep in mind it was definitely something that we learned but i think after you know a few months of doing the podcast i i was personally someone that being a social media manager i get really caught up on numbers, numbers. sometimes yeah. i was the same i was because like, it's Whoa. yeah it's like it's part of the it's, <laughs> it's part of the job as like a social media manager to like keep an eye on like the you know how much a post is being viewed and such because you need to know what's engaging to your audience so it definitely i remember having so many conversations with eliza and she was like it's okay <laughs> so it's like, gonna be okay it's not where i want them to be yeah what? i was like but this episode was amazing but then we would get people <laughs> you know um reviewing the episode or sending us a message or tagging us in something being like oh my god this gave me so much insight thank you so much and it was like oh like that's oh, what it is that's what we it. do that's what we do this for because it's a like like i've like i always say we're learning so much from this so if nobody even listens i don't really care anymore because i'm getting to talk to amazing people and i'm getting to learn so much you know of an insight like daisy hicks what a bloody legend learned so much about the casting industry that we never would have known otherwise yeah that leads us into asking the question. So this is honestly probably <gasps> the most daunting part of starting a podcast. Yeah. Getting to that point <laughs> where you want to ask people to come on. Um, obviously, we have all adapted ways to do that now that gets answers mm-hmm. a little quicker than what we did originally. Um, mm-hmm. So starting out, when you first started messaging people, what did your messages look like? 
They were really long. They were oh, stupidly long. Very. I'm going to pull. I'm very gonna, long. I can find my first one. Hold up. Oh, I, I think, wonder if we do have one. We um, talked a lot about COVID and a lot about. Were you social we, media? Like, did you reach out on social media or? Yeah. yeah. We reached so, out. Oh, anyone, anyone that we were friends with, I would Facebook message them. Um, because, you know, in we the theatre industry, you have so many friends that you don't really often talk to. And then you're like, oh, wow, you're doing really well. Let me just message you to see if you'll come on. Yeah. Ours were very long messages. It was a lot about, hi, like, we're a new Australian theatre podcast, such and such. Like, you are doing so well in such a hard time. The theatre industry is being swept under the rug and we <laughs> want to shine a light. You've brought such a positive light to the industry. We would love to have you on. But it was very much, I didn't ever want to be pushy about it. So I was always just like, if you would like to come on, feel free to let us know. If not, it's okay. But please, <laughs> please come on the podcast. And now you um, like, push, 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 push. <laughs> and now I'm just like, I try to keep things like short and simple because I think... I do a lot of, just because Eliza is so busy living her dream yeah. up in at the Queensland Con. Um, yeah. So I'm constantly trying to just like simplify what we have to say and being like, look, you're currently doing this thing. Um, and like, and like it is for, I think, a lot of artists in Australia, they have all had impact on us as performers, as creatives, as human beings. So just being honest about that being like hey you you are someone with a, a message that you want to send or you're doing this initiative you're doing this show we want to be able to just amplify that voice a little bit more and share your story which is such a big thing for us we want to share your story in theater because we've learned very quickly doing these like interviews everybody has such different stories like there are some people like Sarah Ma who was just like I have been dancing and singing since I was born that's all I ever want to do and other people like Georgina Hobson who I, I believe did a master's in business first yeah. before becoming the powerhouse that she is everyone has their own story and journey and I think it's so exciting to be able to share that yeah so I think it comes down to reaching out you need to be confident in what you're selling to people yeah like cool this is who i am this is what i want to do is that cool yeah. like and then that is definitely yeah i'm so that's sorry i'm gonna it. mute myself and... for a second my boss is uh calling me four times in a row now so i feel like something's gone wrong so i will I continue continue talking i'm just gonna mute myself so i don't yeah um yeah so just like, like reaching out and just being like yo this is who we are this is what we do um come on and have a chat 100 percent. and for us we actually have evolved how we reach out over time yeah. so for some people especially performers we do reach out by instagram which tends to be quite successful most of the time because you can go into seeing who they are and they can see who you are and so yeah. that is quite a successful way to do it but we actually have evolved that over time to reaching out to uh, companies so we we reached out to like come from away and we reached out to Hamilton like we've reached out to different bigger shows which then their PR team kind of contacts you with some more exciting things to do or they'll be like hey we have this would you would that be something you're interested in so I think that and that's been something very exciting over time because we are complete 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 theatre nerds ourselves so um you know getting the opportunity to talk to some people from these bigger shows is definitely a privilege that we are very grateful for so that is it evolves over time and if you're doing a theatre podcast or another type of podcast you can it's very similar in that way so email is actually a great way to do it but also having that website is helpful when yeah. you email because they need to be able to see what you're about exactly yeah now that Tori's back, we're going to jump into yes. contacting <laughs> publicity teams. Um, oh, this is yes. one big thing that I have learned in the last six months. Oh, my word. Um, I am really lucky <laughs> um, because of BPN. I like can be like, hey, I'm signed to this network. And they just go look at the network. And they're like, I feel like that just kind of fast tracks. But looking at a publicist, how, first of all, finding who to contact because – for all oh. of you starting out, you can't just be like, cool, I want to chat to Courtney Monsma, who's playing Anna in Frozen. Come on my show. She's going to be like, 
hi, publicity, can I do this? Publicity is going to be like, no. Mm. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. If, you go, <laughs> if you go to publicity and be like, hey, this is who I am. This is what I do. This is why I want these people on. Can I work with you? They're going to yeah. work with you more often. Um, so finding addresses, how did you first go about finding publicity teams? And it's definitely. Figuring yeah. out how to contact them. Definitely a Tory question. Yeah. Definitely that a was, Tory question. <laughs> when we decided to take that step, I would say it took me a, a long time. Like I got like the emails prepared and I was so scared to send them. Um, I've because, you know. A draft now that I'm like copy paste change. Yep. Cool. I'm good. <laughs> yeah. No, that's exactly, that's exactly how we do it now. Um, but it was definitely somewhere super easy to find. Uh, some were not. Um, what one did you struggle with? Let's see if it was the same one. Um, I think I struggled actually with Frozen. Frozen yeah. was like, cause Frozen's like Disney, but then it's like Disney theatrical. And then like, it's with the Frozen, we were kind of a little bit lucky that we actually had contacted. This was like kind of about the same time that we had started contacting publicity teams. We had actually separately contacted Sam Hagen about doing an interview. Um, and then she directed us. She was like, I would love to, but we have to do it through this channel. Which, so that was actually ended up being easier because I remember looking at Frozen because I was like, Frozen would be a great one. It's like one of the first shows at like full capacity. Um, could not find it anywhere. So we were kind of uh, pretty lucky that Sam was then like, great, here's like the direction you need to go to do that. Um, I think Frozen was the hardest because yeah, it's Disney. And Disney, there are so many different places. I think the first one that we got a response from was Come From Away, if I'm... Yeah. correct um and but that even that was like I had contacted the Sydney publicity team who then redirected me to um, a different person who directed me to the Melbourne publicity team and it was like this never-ending chain of um trying to figure out who I was talking to but along the way it's then meant that like so I think come from away was our first one and that was they were about to reopen in Melbourne um after having like nine months off yeah. um so, but it, it's very much, yeah, you do, you can't ask, uh, at least I found, we don't ask for anyone specific. We yeah. just say, look, this, you know, especially for something like Come From Away, this is a, a, a really important story, especially right now. And it's, it, that show can take on a really different meaning now, considering, excuse me, COVID and everything that we've kind of gone through. Um, so I just, I just, honesty. Yeah. We're, we're a small Australian podcast talking about theatre. We would really love to talk to one of your cast members about their journey, not only with the show, but through COVID, sticking with you throughout it all, and yeah. reopening in Melbourne. Um, we've definitely had better, like, I don't think we've ever had negative responses. Come From Away were no. so generous. Oh, they like just, like, they blend. Beautiful. Me. Shout out to them. Absolutely beautiful. Because you guys are sick yeah but they were just like so giving and like got back to us I think when I spoke when I emailed originally for the Sydney publicity team they got back to me straight away being like hey actually you need to contact such and such and then through that we then also got in contact with I believe it's Kabuki publicity who did fangirls um and we were able to chat to them about that. Unfortunately, that one didn't work out. But the way, how understanding they are, sometimes timing just doesn't work. Yeah, because obviously you both have an agenda. You both have a reason for wanting to do this. It's not a one-way street. You're not doing them a favor. They're not doing you a favor. It's It works both ways. Yeah. Um, and also understanding that, that there are sometimes timelines that they need to keep up with. 100%. And if, and if you can't fit into that timeline, hopefully next time. And we've done other stuff with the publicity team for come from away we've done sean the sheep the circus musical through them because they just reached out and they were like hey we know that you just um released your episode with emma powell would you be interested in chatting with ben napton from um yeah sean the sheep and we we're like of yes yeah. <laughs> is that a question <laughs> um <laughs> but uh i think it's just yeah it it is scary but we did have developed like a draft of what we write and then altering it, obviously, because yeah. we do want to still make it personalized. We don't want it to just be, 
you know, everybody gets the same email every time. Um, but there is certain information that is important that just always needs to so needs be to in there. Yeah. Amazing. And just so research. It's, it's definitely just scary. Research it. Yeah. And research. and find, you know, you know, Tori's a sleuth. You just kind of go in and and research, send emails to some people, they'll redirect you to the right places and then you'll eventually get the hang of it, I feel like. And also don't be offended if someone does not get back to you because these are very, very busy people with lots to do. Like, and also I think come from away originally when we spoke to them, they said, great, we're opening next week. Give us a couple of weeks. And I had this moment after like two weeks where I was like, do I email them back? Do I leave it? I'm not super sure. Um, and they actually ended up emailing us back, whereas other people we've had to chase up about it. When you get, you kind of figure out after a certain point of time, okay, cool. I need this is that. now, yeah. I now need to chase this up. Otherwise it just, you the know, they the do day, have so much going on. Okay. That's what you got to remember is that they're literally running marketing for a show. So like yeah. they're busy <laughs> all the time. Yeah. Um, yes. But yeah, so that's pretty much guys how to start a podcast in 20 minutes. Um, record it. <laughs> Upload it, reach out, and uh, <laughs> don't cry. <laughs> the longest version well, do of cry. how to start a podcast ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, also ask people, like, even if you don't want them as guests, just reach out and be like, hey, who do I need to contact for this? Like, I think that's something I figured out. Cool. I, I want to get you on my show. Who do I need to contact? Like, I know I can't talk to yeah. you. How do I? Mm -hmm. Who do I talk to? That's a big thing. Um. So the future of your show, what have you guys got upcoming? What do you guys want to work on? Is there any shows that you like wish you could be like manifest episodes for? Oh, yes. So many. Every, every We've, show. Probably. There are so, <laughs> there are so many amazing shows coming to, coming to Australia over the next, like, you know, Jagged Little Pill is just being announced. Like, mm -hmm. a lot of smarts and just, just saying, because obviously have she'll you guys be in been Sydney at the same show time. Yet? No. no, I saw it on Broadway. It is an <gasps> absolute banger. I'm so freaking excited. Oh, I'm making not, me excited. <laughs> I'm like I've listened to the, you know I grew up with Alanis Morissette, so I'm kind of like I'll just enjoy it just for her music anyway. Um, but I think you know we'd love to chat with because I, I can see it in the background. Head over heels at the Hayes. Yes. um cry baby at the opera house phantom of the opera um, oh yeah phantom oh phantom Rouge. Coming out. oh my another show that mm -hmm. everybody needs to see because that show i saw it three times in one trip just because i'm like <gasps> really spending money on this show i don't care yeah like fantastic show oh i'm so excited for and that. Uh, well, I'm if that doesn't so sell you, come on, everyone. We're yeah, all going right. to go see Rule, Rule, Rule on Rouge now. City. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> and I think, I like, we've got Hamilton in the works. That's definitely a much longer process because it's such a huge show. Yeah, and that's, it's... like, I've got Hamilton in the works as well. Like, you'll get semi-yeses from people contacting Exactly. Yeah. We're keen. We'll get back to you with details. And I'm like, yes, yeah. cool. Is that a yes? Will it happen? That, uh, like, we're going to put you on a list. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So it won't it happen. Yeah. But I guess for the net, what's next for us, we excitingly are going to come out with a new, I'm not sure when this is coming out, this episode for you, but we are starting a kind of a revamp of our deep dives, which we're going to bring another person on board just for those episodes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we recorded our first one the other day and it went, great so we are starting to you know bring some oldies back but kind of rework them a little uh we are excited to just talk to some more people we're in the process now of deciding kind of our next round of what we would like to put out for the podcast because it kind of goes in waves uh especially with me at uni so I'm studying music theatre right now, so it can be a little bit tricky to yeah. kind of fit everything in. So we're definitely right now at the process of figuring out what's next because we just did suddenly and we've got a couple of people we're reaching out to right now and we'll see what happens. I think it's I think it's okay as well to say that our third person for our deep dives, who's also going to be reviewing um, shows with me, um, because we have actually started to be asked to review shows, which is super exciting and something that I've always wanted to do. So yeah. to have people reaching out to do that is exciting. But that that third person is going to be um, 
uh, Gareth Isaac, um, the hilarious, hilarious Gareth Isaac, who, if you don't know, um, has done productions such as Puffs. Um, he was the narrator in Puffs for both Melbourne and Sydney. He's a, a very tall, lanky, hilarious fella. Um, and we did, we just recorded our first episode of our uh, next deep dive. And that, what a time. What a time that was. We didn't even we didn't even get to the plot of the show in that deep dive because there was so much else to talk about. Um, <laughs> we just want to, yeah, I think branch out, get more people on. And I think we also want to have more variety with the people that we have on. Like we're trying to reach out to more artistic mm. directors, directors, um, set design, costume design, production side of things, as well as actors because, you know, we do have people that listen in that also are interested in the back of house side of things yeah. which and it's also so interesting to learn about that other side of things being like a director or an artistic director it's super exciting yeah exactly so much going on um girls that's yes. where wrap this episode up though on that note amazing right there. um thank you guys so much for coming and joining me uh if you guys want to follow um tori and eliza at all uh ps.stagedoor on instagram you can click their link tree from there and click every other link from that point so just search that on instagram and you'll find it <laughs> pipe up the stage door podcast on spotify hit play listen to their episodes um and i'm sure we're going to work together in the future we're going to make it happen we're going to manifest yes. something. oh yeah um but yeah <laughs> Guys, that is going to wrap us up for another episode here on We Are Theatre and we will be back next week with a brand new episode. See you later. Bye. Bye.